So we are going to attempt, or rather we are going to make a dashboard widget that will allow us to put our contacts, uh, maybe a picture of our logo and different items. Maybe it's the sales team person that will be assigning to this particular development of the website. <laughs> Alright, welcome back to the channel. This time I'm going to be doing something that uh, I've been thinking about doing for a while now. And uh, it's about the WordPress or Classic Press dashboard um, widgets that we do have here. Now, WordPress or Classic Press comes with a default API that allows you to add your own dashboards. Uh, for example, we see this dashboard widget that is added by WooCommerce when you install it. So it's able to show you your net sales, your orders, the products, and what is low in stock, depending on the settings that you add to your WooCommerce. Now, um, in, in most cases, I design websites for clients, and sometimes they get into trouble, or they might have lost their mobile number, or lose my email, <laughs> which is kind of funny, um, losing an email. Uh, however, you want to make it as simple for them to be able to reach out to you and to maybe even recommend your services to other people. So we are going to attempt, or rather we are going to make a dashboard widget that will allow us to put our contacts, uh, maybe a picture of our logo and different items. Maybe it's the sales team person that will be assigning to this particular development of the website. Now, I was searching online, and I know you can use the default uh, WordPress widgets API documentation in here, and it would allow you to add the widget just fine. But I found also a very interesting article from uh, CodePotent on CodePotent.com, and then, of course, you would add the extra URL, or you can just search in the sidebar and search for a dashboard widget. He has an interesting article on how to do this. So he has a picture here. Um, the name, the project, and it's beautifully designed. So he gives goes in detail about doing, uh, looking at the different dashboards. What win? What's the win? Uh, how do you make it work? And he has a few code snippets in here. However, I'm going to actually just go to um, the dash the dashboard widgets API, and we'll start from there. So we can see here he actually has some statically input information, but we can make this even dynamically generated. Uh, maybe we can throw this off a particular API uh, on our website. Let's say we have a million and one websites and we can decide to assign different service uh, people to the different websites. So we could develop an API that is queried and we'll assign the right person uh, via the widget. Or maybe if we change contacts, we don't have to go in every client's website. Uh, we can just do that on our own endpoint and we'll make that work out. So let's jump into the code itself. So I'm going to go into my local installation of WordPress or Classic Press in that matter. And then I'll just create a new folder in my plugins file and I'm going to call it a service widget. And this is a, the file that I'll just add to my editor. And uh, from there, I'm just going to add a new file, which I'll call service editor, service widget dot PHP. And what you need to do actually is you need to first go and find out from, um, let's say from the WordPress plugins and find out uh, wordpress.org. So go to wordpress.org, go into plugins, and then you can check whether service widget, service widget, if I type this well, um, we'll find out if service widget exists because what will happen in most cases is you'll have your plugin updated by someone else if this name already exists. So what I'll do right here is I would actually just go back to my plugins so I'm going to rename this and maybe make it service widget omuchigai service widget and that's what we'll use as the name for our widget okay so after renaming our widget again prefixing it we'll just add it back to our 
our editor and then I'll just do the same thing for this and change the file name so that uh, it's it's already um we've already added uh, what we need to do so for now we're going to add the default pieces that we need so we'll just open up php and then we'll do add the information that's necessary to get our plugin started and that is by adding in uh, the plugin name and we shall call it a uh, service tag or service widget the reason why we add this in uh, the plugins is because plugins usually add more functionality they tap into the functionality of uh, wordpress or classic press and that's the best place to do it so we'll give it a name then we'll uh, give it a description description is a service tag information for web designer uh, the other thing that we can add maybe is a uh, author the plugin author I will just add this uh, then we'll add in the plugin URI which is basically just uh, our information all right so when we finish setting this up all we need to do is go back into our dashboard uh, I'll just use this other page go to the plugin section and we'll see that our plugin is already available we have a description we have a, a URI author and then we can activate this there's more information that you can add into this little piece here like uh, for example the the author uri which is essentially the same thing so if i just did this author uri you can add a text domain and uh, that will allow us to essentially uh, allow our plugin to be translatable so we can add in a text domain and we'll call that uh, home service widget for for now we'll just we'll just leave it at that so the next thing that we need to do is go back to our widgets api here and on looking at it they share with us how we can use this so i'm just going to copy this code straight up and just add it to our widget then i'll be able to explain what it does so the widgets api need when we want to add a dashboard widget we need to add a a unique widget id we need to give it a name we add a callback function and then we add the different arguments and the control uh, callback you'll find uh, how these can be used most times these are optional uh, because we don't use them a lot uh, but we're going to see how we can use them um, in a different in different way but we have a brief explanation of what they do here so we need to tap into the WordPress actions and that's uh, the WP dashboard setup. Now essentially this will allow us to run a function um, that hook that is in the hook. So we are going to have a hook. We have already, we already have a hook in WordPress by default, which is uh, the WP dashboard setup. And what we need to do is we'll run it with the function, this very function, and all our code, this code that we have here, actually needs to be moved and added here. So we're going to have a widget ID which we're going to call um, home service. I'll just copy this from here because we're going to use it so many times. So we'll give it home service. Let me just make this clear. Omchiga service widget. Uh, is right here we're using it as our id and the way the ids actually are in our dashboard is you can actually come and right click on any of the dashboard widgets that we do have here 
and you can come and see what it's called. For example, this has an ID of dashboard <coughs> activity. Dashboard underscore activity. If we looked at this one, uh, we can see that it's called a dashboard underscore primary. And if we look at the one from WooCommerce, we'll see that it's called a WooCommerce dashboard status. So we're able to tap into this. For example, when we want to remove the particular widgets, let's say we wanted to have a clean dashboard. Uh, for us here, we don't want our customer to see all this because it can be confusing. We are able to use one of um, the functions that are in WordPress. Again, tapping into the WP dashboard setup, we, we are able to see that uh, we can actually remove some of those. So for example, let me just copy this whole code here. Uh, we're going to go for a clean dashboard. So before we, we do all the other, before we add our new dashboard in there, I'm just going to comment this out so that it doesn't affect the code. So we're going to remove all the other panels that are already existing in our WordPress install. So if I reload here, you'll actually see that we now have a clean dashboard. Apart from the WooCommerce um, widget that is here, that is still here. So what I'm going to do is just copy this name, uh, which is, I'll just get the ID, and then I'll go back to, to our editor. I'm going to duplicate this and just change only the ID, uh, which is this. So if I change it, if I duplicate this and then add the, particular ID that I need to do and save, when I reload our page here, you should be able to see that actually go away. So if I also choose to inspect this, I'll find that this is called a recent reviews, welcome as dashboard recent reviews. So I can just duplicate this again, replace this, save. Uh, when I come back to our dashboard, reload, you'll actually see that our dashboard is actually clean. However, I'm now going to add our new dashboard widget and I'll just tidy this up a bit. So we have our, our new dashboard widget, which we have given an idea of Omchiga service tag, service widget, and we'll also do the same uh, in this event. I'm just going to put this in quotes and I'll call this a uh, web developer service tag so that the client when the client for example wants to know what's going on here let me just cut the, these others let me just remove those just to show you if I reload here okay we have a few errors going in here because we have too few of our arguments so I'll just add a callback function here to 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 make that possible uh, to to remove our error. So I'll add the function here, the callback function, but functions don't work well with uh, dashes. So we're going to add a proper uh, PHP name for our function. So we'll have that function. These other arguments are optional, so I'll just remove them for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and then make a new function down here, which I'll, uh, I'll just add. We have that as our function. And then we'll just add in some information where we, we just echo out something like, uh, voila, if I remember my French properly. So then we'll terminate that with a, with a semicolon. Now, when we go back and reload our page, our error is gone and we can see we actually have a new dashboard widget here that we can move. It has our special service tag, it has a voila in there and we're able to add more information. So what I'm going to do, just like what Code Potent actually had here, um, he brought in some HTML and fixed all this information here. So I'm just going to copy some information here <coughs> just to allow us to quickly add that information in there. I'm just going to copy the, I'm just going to highlight that and then paste in our information and tidy up a bit. 
I'll just tidy that up a bit. So we need to escape our PHP here. Leave some space there for to make it clean and then open our PHP down there. So what we are doing is bringing in some HTML and let's see how this looks like. So I'll save this and then I'll come back to our dashboard. And if I reload here, we're able to see our information coming up. So we have the picture, we have the information, just like uh, what the article was telling us. Of course, there's a little bit of styling that's missing, but we can always add that in our widget. We can add some CSS through our PHP and we can make this even look better. So right now we have this information that is static, but we can afford to make it actually more dynamic. So the next step that we are going to do is actually create an options page and we shall be able to update our information from there. And then we shall take it a step further by having an external uh, API, let's say that has the URL embedded in there. And when we do a quick search on our endpoint, we find out which URL are we using on this site. And then we are able to find out the different information that we can quickly fit in, in here in our page. So if you want to see how that looks like, please, please, please subscribe to the channel and turn on your notific notifications so that you don't miss when that update comes out. So I look forward, oh, if you want to try this out, please make it your own. Um, try it out, go read Code Potent's um, documentation and his articles. He has fantastic information about how to make this even cleaner. Uh, for example, he tells you about namespacing, which allows you to, to escape the issues we've been having of trying to just add everything into our namespace where we are adding uh, Omchiga through everything. So you're able to see how to make this a lot cleaner. Um, of course, you can you can use this very action to have only a function that is only removing meta boxes, and then a function that's adding meta boxes. So in the next edition of our in the next video that we'll be having, we shall be making this information very dynamic so that you don't have to always come into the widget itself and edit this information. So keep your eyes peeled. Thank you for watching and happy coding.